welcome you all today we are going to talk about another topic and this time it is assimilation we are going to talk about what is assimilation uh, types of assimilation directions of assimilation this topic is from the contents of the subject english code 203 phonetics and english phonology this is our lecture 13th we already have conducted 12 lectures in our lecture series program and uh, we are going to talk about uh, this topic here in our lecture 13. So without a further ado, let's talk about our today's topic. Here, what is assimilation? Here is a definition from the book, uh, or we may say it's a dictionary, Longman dictionary, uh, language teaching and applied linguistics. A phonological process in which a speech sound changes and becomes more like or identical to another sound that proceeds or follows it so this is the definition uh it means to say a uh, speech sound changes in connected speech we already have talked about in our lecture lecture number 12 uh, connected speech and uh, this is one of uh, the ways of connected speech and this is the way in which uh speech sound changes so here we are going to talk about the words examples we are rendering and their transcription and after assimilation for example, the word is handbag. You see its transcription, its pronunciation, handbag. After uh, assimilation, it is going to be like handbag. In connected speech, this is uh, one of the ways of uh, connected speech, and that is assimilation. And this type of uh, sound change uh, is known as assimilation. Here is another example that want to its transcription or pronunciation is like want to but in connected speech it sometimes been pronounced as wanna without t sound this is without t right and this sound it is going to be n sound here uh it, it, it is a change of a sound here so this type of change uh is known as assimilation in connected speech here is another example that is uh, five pens so five pens right so how the sound were is going to be changed as a first sound five pens so this change uh in connected speech uh, here is another example of assimilation so here is another example that girl so that girl is going to be changed as uh, that girl, right? So this t is going to be changed as ka. So this change of sound um, in connected speech is one of the ways of assimilation or it is known as assimilation. Here is another definition. And this time, this definition is taken from the book English Phonetics and English Phonology. Uh, sorry, English Phonetics and Phonology, uh, written by Peter Roch. And according to this book, the definition of assimilation is a significant difference in natural connected speech is the way that sounds belonging to one word can cause changes in sounds belonging to neighboring uh, words. So how neighboring words are changed just because of the other uh, sounds in English. In connected speech is like uh, this is another way of assimilation. We find a phoneme realized differently as a result of being near some other phoneme belonging to a neighboring word. We call this difference an instance of assimilation. Like this picture, how the color of uh, this group changes to another, uh, the color of another group. So this is like one sound makes a uh, change. Uh, in other sound, this change is known as our one phoneme is going to change or affect another phoneme. This type of change of sound and connected speech is known as assimilation according to this uh, book, English Phonetics and, and uh, Phonology by Peter Roch. Here is uh, another way of uh, making understanding of this uh, uh, sound changes. And uh, again, from the same book, generally speaking, the cases that have most often been described are assimilations affecting consonants. So mostly consonant sounds are affected in assimilation. 
As an example, consider a case uh, where two words are combined, the first of which ends with a single final consonant, which we will call CF. So we are going to have so many examples with the help of this uh, diagram. And we call the final consonant of one word and the second of which starts with the single initial consonant, we will call CI, initial consonant of another word. We can construct a diagram like this. So this uh, understanding of this text is here. For example, the uh, if we are using two words, so two words, uh, they affect the sounds of consonant, like the final consonant of the word and the initial consonant of the word. So this is word boundary. This is word boundary. And here are the words like get them. So this is the CF, uh, the final consonant, and this is the CI, the initial consonant of another word. So mostly uh, consonant sounds are been affected in the connected speech or in the way of assimilation. For example, how this, this is the uh, transcription get and them. So it is going to be changed as get them, right? So this uh, is another example from this book. What is assimilation? Here, there are three directions for making assimilation. And these are directions I have taken from the very authentic book, English Phonetics and Phonology by Peter Roch again. And that is progressive assimilation. Another kind is regressive assimilation or anticipatory coarticulation. Number three, that is a coalescent assimilation, or we may call it a reciprocal assimilation. So let's define one by one these all directions. And number one, progressive assimilation we are going to talk about. And we are going to make another understanding from the same diagram we already have talked about. As with the help of a CF and CI, the final consonant of one word and initial consonant of another word. So if CI changes to become like CF, in some way the simulation is called progressive. So if CI changes to become CF, like the word is get them again. So you see get and them. If this ter sound affects their sound, means this is the progressive assimilation. Means the initial sound, means this sound, changes to become like this sound, right? Means the... CI initial sound changes this sound initial sound changes to become like this final sound so as we already have talked about it is going to be get them so this sound changes this da sound this kind of uh, change is known as progressive assimilation here is another type of uh, a direction of assimilation that is regressive assimilation or anticipatory coarticulation. So in which um, CF changes to become like CI in some way, the assimilation is called regressive. CF changes to become like CI. So for example, I have taken the example which I have found most suitable from Longman Dictionary and uh, the example is uh, 10 coins. So it is going to be changed like 10 coins. So na sound is going to be changed like a na sound. And this change is, it means to say, you see, CF, CF um, changes to become like CI, right? So this CF is changes to become like CI. So this sound affects this one. This is called regressive assimilation. Uh, this direction mean to say this changes that one. In progressive, this sound, final consonant was changing to the initial consonant. But in a regressive, this uh, initial consonant changes uh, like uh, uh, changes to uh, changes to this uh, final consonant. 
Here is another example. Good morning. So its transcription is like good morning. You see this da sound is changed to become ba in connected speech. So this ma actually affects this uh, final consonants. This final consonant changes like this initial consonant of another word in connected speech. This is another example of the regressive assimilation. And number third, that is a collistant assimilation. And in collistant assimilation, uh, reciprocal assimilation takes place when uh, two sounds in a sequence come together to produce a sound with the features from both original sounds. This uh, definition and example is taken from this book, this dictionary, did you. So this is did you. You see, d and j sound is going to be like this sh sound. So did you, so did you, right? Did you is going to be did you, right? Did you. So this change means we are producing from two sounds, this uh, final and initial consonants, we are changing and producing another type of sound here. This is uh, another uh, direction that is known as collicent assimilation. When we are producing out of two consonants, we are producing here another sound like can't you. So can't you, we say can't you, can't you, chair sound, right? So we are producing another sound here. So this kind of assimilation is known as uh, collicent assimilation in English. Uh, let's talk about types of assimilation here. Now, the main differences between consonants are of three types. So we can identify number one, assimilation of place of articulation, number two, assimilation of manner of articulation, and number three, that is assimilation of wise things. So these are the types of assimilation. So let's discuss one by one. These are types of assimilation here. And again, these uh, notes are taken from English uh, phonetics and phonology book. Assimilation of place of articulation. Assimilation of place is uh, most clearly observable in some cases where a final consonant CF with alveolar place of articulation is followed by an initial consonant CI with a place of articulation uh, that is not alveolar. Means when the uh, final consonant alveolar place of articulation like T, S, uh, does uh, pearl, uh, these are the alveolar um, actually sounds in places of articulation. So followed by, if this uh, final consonant is followed by the um, another initial consonant with a place of articulation that is not alveolar. So how this, if you see in rapid casual speech, T sound, T is the alveolar um, place of articulation will become p. So p is not actually the uh, before a bilabial consonant. So t is going to be changed to p sound before bilabial consonant, like the word is that person. You see, this final consonant is actually alveolar sound, t, and this p is actually bilabial consonant. So you see, um, this t is going to be changed like p sound. So this change um, of alveolar place, um, final a final consonant, like the uh, initial consonant of another word, this change of consonant is uh, a type of assimilation that is known as assimilation of place of articulation. Here is another example, and this example is of the same type. So these are more examples you may observe here. Here, we are going to talk about another example. Before a velar consonant, uh, the T will become K. If we see that case, T, this velar, you see, this is going to be like K. So we don't say that case, we say that case. So this, is going to be changed like ka 
and bright color. So we are not going to pronounce bright color. In connected speech, we say uh, bright color, right? So this is another uh, example of assimilation of place of articulation. Here we are going to talk about another type of assimilation and that is assimilation of manner of articulation and this uh, uh, belongs to the manners of articulation and assimilation of manner is much less noticeable and is only found in the most rapid and casual speech. Generally speaking, the tendency is again for aggressive assimilation and the change in manner is uh, most like to be towards an easier consonant, one which makes less obstruction to the airflow. So I'm going to make you understand with the help of uh, the examples. It is thus possible to find cases where a final plosive, final plosive, and what are the plosive sounds like pa, ta, ka, becomes uh, our fricative, our nasal sound. Fricative sounds like fa, ta, so, this final plosive, you see, final plosive, right? This is going to be changed like the fricative sa sound. So this is the plosive, ta is the plosive sound. It is going to be changed like this sa, and sa is the fricative sound. So you see, this is another example, good night, good night. But, but here we are not going to say good. We say good night. So da is going to be changed like na sound. The plosive sound is going to be changed like fricative or nasal sound. So this uh, kind of uh, change in manners of articulation in consonant sounds um, uh, is known as another type of assimilation and that is uh, assimilation of a manner of articulation. Here, um, the third type of assimilation and that is assimilation of a voice is also found. Um, but again, only in a limited way. Only regressive assimilation of voice is found across word boundaries and then only of one type. So this type of um, voicing type only in a regressive assimilation we see um, as uh, if CF is a lanus, lanus means to say voiced sounds. So if CF is voiced consonant and CI is fortis, voiceless, we often find that lanus consonant has no voicing. So if it is a uh, voiced consonant follows by the voiceless initial sound. So this um, no more become uh, voiced as here is the example. For example, in I have to, you see, I have to, the final v in have becomes voiceless, f. This is voiceless, f. It is going to be changed like fa, right? because of the following voiceless t sound. So this is actually voiced v, but t is voiceless. So if this uh, voiced sound uh, follows by voiceless, so this v is going to be changed like fa, right? Like we are going to say here, like I have to, we don't say I have to, we are going to say I have to. So this voice is going to be changed like first sound here. So this type of uh, assimilation is called assimilation of voicing. Here, um, assimilation of voicing. Here is another example, and this is the fixed example. And I'm not going to read this uh, text. You may read it. I'm going to make you understand with the help of this example, like cats. So this uh, sound and dogs. So again, this is uh, and here is, uh, but we say here we pronounce uh, and here we pronounce za. Uh, jumps. Here we say runs, right? So here pets and palms. So a similar example of type of assimilation that has become fixed is the progressive assimilation of vice with uh, the suffixes sa uh, and za. Uh, thus examples are here. So these examples are from assimilation of voicing, but this is we know as fixed um, uh, assimilation of voicing. Thanks for attention. Thank you very much. Hopefully this was uh, very helpful for all of you.